Amy, welcome to the program. Hi, thank you so much. Um, hey, you could have just dropped by. <laughs> well, you're nice. You could have just <laughs> dropped by my house. I mean, you're in, where are you in Southern California? Um, I'm born and raised in uh, Orange County in um, Irvine, um, but I now live in San Diego. Oh, so Southern, Southern, Orange, or Southern, Southern. California. Yeah, now. All right. Exactly. Well, tell me, um, tell me how I can help you. Yeah. So, um, I'm 34. Um, uh, have been dating. Um, I was in a relationship the last five weeks that ended sadly yesterday. Um, no, wait, a minute. All the wait, a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, uh -huh. wait, wait, wait. You were in a relationship for the last five weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that right? So, so still does that new. mean, is that, I'm sorry. And so it's still very new. <laughs> yeah, so, still very new. But but five. but when you say five weeks was like you were dating him for a while and then y'all said one day, okay, we're in a relationship, or you just started dating him five weeks ago? Sorry, just started dating five weeks ago. Okay. So you know this guy for five weeks and you were in some kind of mm -hmm. relationship. All right. Was it was it yeah. exclusive? Was it an exclusive one? Yeah, I mean, he we met on a dating app and he re deleted it after our second date and we were just having fun getting to know each other and it felt very exclusive in nature. But um, I guess technically, uh, as far as that conversation goes, we had not had that yet. So, um, How did, but, so but it we, ended. Why did, why did it end? Yeah, so I mean, I felt like we had all four C's, the character, competency, you know, chemistry, and, and um, uh, I think the last one's cultural um, compatibility. Um, the relationship ended for two reasons, um, one that's out of my control and one that I want to learn from. Um, the one that is out of my control is he was not sure if he was over his divorce, um, which happened over like 18 months ago. Um, so I... And the one that's in control for me is, um, I think as part of my vetting process, I think that I can, uh, I ask very well-intentioned questions, um, always with a smile on my face and always open to, to learning <laughs> how they've healed from their process, et cetera. But I do want to learn how I can have a more gradual process to dating yeah. and vetting someone without them feeling like, we jumped in too soon um, and too fast, and uh, well, and well, actually, that that, that 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 wouldn't be contradictory, right? You said you don't want them to feel like you jumped in too fast. So if you're vetting them, that's actually going to keep them from feeling like you jumped in too fast, right? Right. That's how I felt, and I um, I felt like I did a fairly good job, you know, trying to understand his background and his upbringing, um, and uh, just learning from my own understanding, kind of data points on on him and his yeah. character, and okay, but yeah. but hang on a second. So, uh, 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 so, give me the question. Give me the question, and then I want to comment on the process. Yeah, I mean, I guess my question was, I I want to learn how to have a better gradual process. Actually, I think that's yeah. more or less my question. Okay. I yeah, want to learn well, from this, you know. I want you to, too, because from meeting somebody too exclusive in five weeks, um, that, that's why I asked you that original question. Was it like there was this process that went up and then you had the DTR conversation, right? Define the relationship conversation. And so mm -hmm. you said, OK, we're going to just say each other. And that lasted five weeks and then it went away. Uh, wait a minute. One more data point for me. Why did it end? Well, <laughs> that's, I guess, the big question. And so I, he basically said he wasn't oh, sure he was over his divorce. He was over being married to the girl that he was married to. But the actual healing process of his divorce, I had asked him even on our very first date, how did you heal from your divorce? And he thought it was a great question. And he'd been to counseling and felt very confident that he had. And, um, and then kind of out of nowhere, um, it, he said that that was something that he realized over time. Um, maybe looking down the road with me, 
he was like, I, I don't know. I feel like we're moving too fast. Um, and okay. I did bring up nicely. I didn't want to move as fast as we did. You know, I did what was, feel what like was maybe, moving, what was, what was moving too fast? Um, you know, I, I think, uh, and that was kind of my question. We joked a lot about the future and I know there's like a, you know, a term called future faking where you kind of talk a lot about the future and you joke around about the future, but you know, we started okay, were to, you, uh, in our, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. You talked a lot about the future together, mm -hmm. like when, when we're married kind of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. That's fast in five weeks. It, huh. Yeah. And it was, it was, it was kind of a joke and it, you know, it was kind of a lighthearted connection that we could kind of joke about, uh, you know, but yeah. I think in, in even with the joking aside, I think that it somehow started to mean something a little bit more. And then he freaked out over his own joke. <laughs> that's how I take yeah. That's how I Scare am saying it. Yeah. Scared himself. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So what about other areas? Were you guys like, did you move in together in the first five weeks? No. Oh, no, no. Mm -mm. No, I think the other problem of our uh, relationship was just um, that uh, physical intimacy. I said, I shared that my desire, you know, just out of my faith was to wait till after I got married and him being a married, you know, previously married man um, didn't share that, that he respected um, my decision, but it was not, that he also felt like that could have been a deal breaker for him. So well, that also did come up in conversation. That's good. I don't buy the, because he was previously married, that that's not why. The why was you had different values. You know, somebody can be yeah. previously married and then decide they're going to choose that value and, you know, go a different direction. Um, so let, let me address the fasting. This is a great question. In fact, are you a Boundaries.me subscriber? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so go on there and look at the How to Get a Day Worth Keeping course. There's a whole, you know, I did a whole thing on there. But but part of mm -hmm. part of the emphasis on that is that I, I, I tell people, look, it's really, really important. First of all, are, let me ask you another question. Are you in a good support system? Do you have a small group? few girlfriends, prayer group. I do. Mm -hmm. You do. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very important that somebody is not dating out of a vacuum. You need a good support system. So you're not, you're not alone on the planet. You're not looking for a relationship. So you won't be alone because you're not alone because you have community. Okay. So that's, that's mm -hmm. number one. But after that, it's really, really important. I think for people who are dating to be dating a lot of different people. Now, I don't mean dating a lot of different people in the way that you were dating him because you guys were you guys were in a relationship. I mean just going out with a bunch of people. Because what happens is as you're you know as you're meeting a lot of different people, you know, you're getting some numbers up, right? And then then somebody's going to kind of stand out in a crowd for some reason because they've got certain qualities and this that and the other. And then you're going to go out with them a few more times and you're slowly kind of, but you're not, you're not immediately getting exclusive. Okay. And you're not doing anything that would require exclusivity or there's some sort of foul. In other words, mm -hmm. if you're acting like somebody's girlfriend and boyfriend, but then you're also going out with somebody else, well, that would be a foul. But if you're telling them, yeah, you know, I'm going out with a lot of people right now and just kind of figuring out, you know, I don't know exactly what I want to do. And, and I'm just learning and I really enjoy spending time together. If you want to do that and, you know, we'll go to movies or dates or, you know, you just kind of like, just be honest. But at some point there gets to be this point where you feel like, you know what, I like you and I want to get to know you better. And I think I'm, I think I'm kind of interested in maybe, we have a relationship that's more substantive. 
do you feel that way? And you kind of have that talk. And then you figure out, yeah, okay. And so at some point, then you've gone through this process where you've had a lot of different, you've, let me give you some keys. You've met their friends before you get exclusive. I mean, you want to tell a lot about a person, look at their friends. How long have they had those relationships? Are all their, all their close friends new friends? Where are the old friends? You know, how connected are they to their, to their family? And if they're not wise, there's a good reason for it. Have they built, if, they don't, if they're not connected to their family because their family's psycho, then how about a spiritual family, a community that, they've, that they're invested in and all of that? Where do they give in their lives? Where do they serve? Where do they have purposes that transcend their own sense of, you know, it's all about me? And so you're getting to know all these facets. And that's, to your point, that's the timeline where you start to get a comfort level of, I think I'd like to know this person better because everything I'm seeing kind of makes me want to get to know them better. They've got a life. They're going somewhere. They have things they care about. You know, they, they have people they serve. They have people that, that love them over time. They have these values and they invest time and energy and money in, in, in things that matter. And so that's the vetting process. And then you get to a point to where you can say, I don't want you to go out with anybody else. I just want us to go out with each other. <laughs> and you kind of get, and you kind of drive your stake in the ground, but not until then. Does that help? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It does. Yeah. Thank you so much. What's the hesitancy? Do I sense any hesitancy uh, or a question? <laughs> no. What is it? Uh, uh, I'm trying to think. Um, does that sound like a lot of work? No. No, 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 no. Mm-mm. I mean, I, I think it's... Um, it's meant to be yeah, fun. No, I, I appreciate that. Yeah. No, and I and I think that's that is uh you know, I did not put all my eggs in one basket and I think that's why I can move on whole Good for you. I feel like we both left each other, you know, better than how we found each other, which has kind of been my dating mantra. Um Good for with you. anybody I've gone out on dates with. So yeah, and I, I we had a good ending and no hard feelings. So I just want to make sure that I learn all I can from this. Um, and move on to the next yeah that's awesome that's awesome go look at the course see what you think call me back